Hello, everyone. This is Rob Golfie with Remax, the Golfie team. A welcome to the Golfie Real Estate Show, Niagara Edition, with host Stephanie Vivier. Well, hello there, Rob Golfie. Did you have a nice Thanksgiving? Yes, I did. It was good. Now I got to drop a few pounds, and you know, you know, <laughs> you know, you know how everybody uh, after uh, you know Christmas, everybody signs up to the gym. Well, I, I used to, I used to have a trainer that uh, trained me in. It was right up to COVID, I think, I went. And then after COVID, it kind of peered, peered it off. But now um, I signed up with somebody to, to train me. But the, 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 the training that I need is not an hour long. I can't do it. It's too much. I got too, much my, too, much, too many things on my mind. So I told this trainer, I go, look, I need an intense half-hour workout. I go, if you can do that, I come in. I'll be in just before we get started. Give me a half-hour intense workout, and I'm out the door. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're going to work on that for me. So I can go, um, right now I got two days a week scheduled. I'm hoping to get a third day if there's an opening, but there, she, she's pretty tied up. So I'm looking forward to that, that, and that's starting ne next week. And, um, yeah, no, it was just, uh, yeah, a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, fun, a lot of, uh, you know, it's funny how you get tired eh, after a big meal, uh, when you're sitting, sitting down and, uh, it's just like, oh boy, I need a nap after this meal. Yeah. Um, almost yeah. seems like the less you do and the more you eat, the lazier you are. Right. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I know. I know. But now, now it's time to get, get, uh, buckle down and, uh, and watch my, uh, watch my weight for Christmas so I can gain it again in Christmas. <laughs> yeah. So. It's, the, it's the cycle we all go through for sure, Rob. Yeah. Uh, and this week I understand you, you were actually feeding some people as well, not only, uh, enjoying in the friends and family, but also, uh, reaching out to some, some people you didn't know. Yeah. So, you know what I, I drive by, you know, these different areas and there's, you know, homeless, uh, people, and uh, he, uh, so I just, you know, like I see this, I go, you know what, I'm going to, you know, one morning I just said, that's it. I, uh, I, uh, I went to McDonald's. I said, listen, I need about 25, 30, you know, egg McMuffins with bacon, whatever. Just, I just need, I just need 30. I said, can you guys accommodate that? They said, no problem. We'll do that. So I went in, uh, so I went this, to this area where there was a lot of homeless people hanging out. It's like a, it's like a big crowd almost. So, so I would drive by this area every once in a while and I would count how many homeless people are there. So I said, okay, there's, you know, sometimes it's 15, sometimes there's 20, you know, 25, it depends. So I, I, I made sure I got about 20, I don't know, 26, 27 uh, egg McMuffins. So I, one morning I show, I show a drive in, I say, hey guys, I get out of the car, I go, here's some san san uh, breakfast sandwiches for you guys. And uh, they were all happy, they were happy about that. So, but the one thing, you get, this is really you know, kind of weird. So there was this one guy, he had an expensive jacket on, but it was worn down. It was pretty worn out, right? It was like an expensive jacket. He had a bike, a cell phone. And I go, I don't think you're homeless, buddy. And he go, and the other, the other homeless guy says, no, he is homeless. And I'm going, well, he looks, looks pretty, wearing pretty expensive you know, stuff on to be homeless right and anyway i still gave him a sandwich and uh <laughs> it was funny like it's just funny to see when you you recognize certain you know the guys wearing like like it's like a 800 dollar thousand dollar jacket he's wearing i mean but i'm not saying it was new i'm just saying it was pretty worn so maybe it was he got it from some you know goodwill and somebody you know and then whatever i don't know but anyway it just it just when you see a guy wearing all nice stuff i mean old, nice stuff but it's all worn and old you just kind of wonder a little bit about it but anyway i still gave him a sandwich it was good um and then usually at the coffee shop uh sometimes where i go there's uh, um uh homeless uh homeless guys hang out there and uh uh, I, I will buy him a coffee. So as I'm walking in, I say, hey, do you need a coffee? And they say, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they kind of look for me now almost if I show up there in the morning because I'll buy him a coffee all the time. And uh, I, you know what? I'll, I'll tell you. I, 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 and I didn't have I, – I really at one point uh, I had homeless people kind of was sleeping on my property on the front porch on one of my offices. And it, and it was bothering me. I said, guys, get off this porch. Like, you you know what I mean? Like, and, uh, you know, I said, listen, there's help out there for you. Like, if, if you need any help and, and they don't want help, they don't want no, they just rather live on their own. They don't want, I, I don't think they want to live under the rules. They just rather live on their own. And, you know, some, you know, I said, guys, listen, you can't hang out here, you know? And I said, here's, here's five bucks. 
buy yourself some lunch or whatever you need and, and stuff like that. And a lot of times they don't really want food. I don't know why. Like I, I know they're probably in, in, in drugs and some of them or whatever, whatever they get their hands on and whatever they get money for. But, um, but anyway, yeah, I just, uh, I, I feel sad for them. I, and, and, and it's not just mental illness. A lot of these guys, a lot of these guys just had bad luck and they just, you know, ended up getting, you know, uh, separated, divorced. I, there, there's, there's one guy, uh, I, I gave him a sandwich and he goes, and he goes, is there anybody in the tent? Yeah. He goes, my wife's in that tent. I go, oh. holy smokes. I go, wow. And, uh, I just completely, like there's couples out there yeah. a, as homeless. And I'm like, you know what? It's hard to take. And, and I kind of look at it to, you know, just, you know, you don't want to be in that situation. So you want to be, you just, you just kind of look at it and say, Hey, like not everybody has, you know, life is tough out there. So I just wanted to, you know, just help out every once in a while. And, 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 you know, I can, and, uh, you know, most of those guys are good guys. They do not want to cause trouble. They just are just living life. They're just going through life. That's it. And they're not out to cause any problems. And, uh, I mean, they may steal stuff if you have stuff around your house, to, but, but but they're not really there to really hurt anybody or anything. So if you got any stuff, so don't leave it around no matter what, especially there's homeless people around. But yeah. anyway, yeah. You never know. You show someone some kindness like yeah. that, uh, it can really change their life. So yeah, good reminder for all of us. And, you know, who knows who, what situations could happen and, and we could be there. Uh, let's talk real estate, Rob. We got some big numbers and big changes. Yeah, from last so, so yes, yes, yes. So I checked the numbers in Niagara, uh, like, like for the month of, uh, till, till today, till now. So in Niagara, it's up 22% in sales from last year, this time, which is good. I mean, things are starting to move and, uh, there's confidence in the, in the marketplace and, and same thing in Hamilton, 20% up, uh, same time last year, last year versus, uh, this year, uh, we're up this year. So, so things are moving along. Now, the big news is going to be when they do the announcement and I think it's next week, uh, whatever they're going to do a half point rate drop or a quarter point rate drop. So we know they're going to probably do a quarter point, but that half point will make a huge difference. They should, they should have done it earlier, uh, this month, but anyway, but I do feel Things are starting to happen, and uh, and people are uh, are are, start, are starting to go out there and starting uh, starting to buy and uh, and getting in you know getting involved in home ownership. A lot a lot of uh, um, I talk to mortgage brokers, and they're saying they're getting a lot of pre approvals, so they're starting to look for houses. Uh, people saved money, and uh, you know it is tough out there. Like, you know, housing is still expensive. It's it's not that's not going to change. That's how it is in Canada. That's that's where we live. And, um, and yeah, things are, things are moving along. It's positive. Well, that, yeah. That is some great news, of course. Um, now when we talk about that interest rate cut, that, that is probably going to happen next week, Rob, and, and you talked about those pre approvals and I know at robgolfie.com people can get started on that mortgage pre approval. So that's a really convenient way to do it. You know, it, people have a few days to, should we really get the ball rolling here? Cause I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, when those interest rates drop, we probably will see more of these increases that you've just told us about. Absolutely. Now, now get in, get into the market. Now, if you're buying, get into it. Um, if you've been sitting on the fence, there's a lot of inventory out there. You can negotiate a decent deal still. Uh, but once we hit into the new year, um, that is going to change. And, and, uh, and, and that's the big question. A lot of people are saying right now, it says number one question people ask me, uh, uh, ask me is when, when should I sell? And it, it is a huge topic on even on Reddit. I'm not sure if you uh, uh, been on Reddit at all, but uh, if people don't know, it's 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 another platform that people go on there and they can discuss certain things. If you want to talk about real estate, you can go on there. And and I and I printed off some of the Reddit and, uh, questions and answers. It says here, I'm here's one here. I'm selling my house, but I don't need to sell immediately. I'm getting uh, conflicting info on whether housing prices will go up or down in the next several months. Should I sell by now or should I wait? Well, I, I to me, I, I think if you can wait, fantastic. But like, but what I'm saying is, in my 
experience in my opinion this is my opinion this i'm not i'm not saying this is going to happen so if you were writing back to this reddit or you would go on reddit what would your comment say i I would say if you can hang on okay if you're in niagara if you can hang on to march april i think you will do uh, uh, a lot better now anything can happen in the world during that time we can get a we can get a tidal wave that comes in in niagara and all of a sudden oh what a bad that was a bad move like we don't know what happens there could be a war or there could be a, a hurricane like you don't know there could be you know uh, some some major catastrophe that happens that you said ah, i should have sold now so you don't you don't know so what i'm saying though traditionally traditionally when people um if if i had to say the way the market is right now and the way the interest rates are going happening and everything the way the market's changing i i'd probably if if you could wait till then but now that's if you're not buying another house that's if you're not buying another house. You're selling right. your house. Most of the time, that's the say, That's the case, right? We yeah. want to buy and, and, you know, especially when you're building the family, you want to get something big or something better for the family. Yeah. So if you're, if you're, if you're going to buy in a busy, hot market, you, I mean, or if you're going to sell in a busy, hot market and buy, you're buying in the same market. So it's no different than you selling now and buying now. It's no different. So it, 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 the numbers work out the same. It balances out. Um, here, um, uh, here's another one here. Um, um, it says, uh, statistically 80% of people move between March and September. Um, th- that's it. The fall market, March, but th- there's that spring market, February, March, April is, is when people, uh, sell. Here's another one. It says the one plus about selling in a down market is that you also be buying in a down market th- just what we said here. And it says, assuming that's your plan. It also means lower closing costs on both properties. The the good thing is that you have time on your side so you can ride out crappy offers uh, you may get and wait for the right buyer. This is, so if this is, this one's what, if the one plus selling in a down market. So, so it, like we're right now in a, like the market's on hold. It's not, it's not going down anymore. It's not going up right now. It's just kind of frozen. And uh, so, and, but, but there are some good deals out there. January, February is very slow time in the housing market. This is somebody that doesn't know this here. I'll tell you. January, February, uh, January, February, slow time in the housing market. You will not get the same exposure as listing in the spring. Well, I'm going to tell you something. This is somebody that doesn't know this. The Bank of Canada may start cutting rates in the spring. This will likely drive uh, prices up. This is, okay, this is an older thing, uh, uh, comment. Yeah, I was going to ask you, Rob, because like, people do this, right? Like Reddit is very calm and you go on and, you know, this is the situation in my life. What do people think about it? Those types of things. How much like stock should people take in these answers? Because like, as you pointed out, often it's, you know, maybe lay people just kind of going yep. on and giving their thoughts about it. It, it is. You got to be very, very careful. Try to find whoever's res- uh, very, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, experienced, uh, uh, um, credible on on Reddit. If you if recognize a credible person, now like February March, I'll tell you something. In Toronto, February March is the market when it starts uh, kicking in gear, especially the beginning of February. Now in Hamilton, it's it's February March. In Niagara, it's March April. So if I was a if so if I was a betting man, and I I was let's say I had a house in Niagara Falls, St. Catharines, or even Welland. I probably would wait till the first of March to list, and uh, just because I know how the wave happens in in uh, from the, from you know the GTA towards Niagara, and uh, and it just depends. Like it, I like it, like we have a large team, and we have all our team members uh, work and live and work in those markets. So we have we have agents that uh, you know live in Burlington and work in Burlington. And we have a, a, an office in Burlington. The Golfy team has an office. We have a Hamilton office. We have a Grimsby office. We have a St. Catharines office. And we have a Niagara Falls office. And um, so we have people on my team that live in, live in those areas. And we, get, we know the market better than usually any, anybody else because we work like four different markets. And so we have a greater understanding of how trends work, how the market is is gearing towards. So, but but yeah, I think Niagara. Uh, if you're if you're going first of March, you won't you won't miss the market. If it starts a little earlier, and if it starts in February, no problem. You're still in the game. If it starts a little later, no problem. You're you're on the market. So you you won't go wrong by listing in uh, in first of March. And that is the spring market, not April, May, June. That's not a spring market. The spring market starts earlier. 
Wow. Just like our hopes for spring. We're always wanting spring earlier. So you can remember that when you start wanting spring, that's when the spring market's happening in real estate. Rob Golfi is with us. This is the Golfi Real Estate Show, Niagara edition. You can connect with his award-winning team on robgolfi.com or stick around here. Rob's going to be back with us uh, right here on News Talk 610 CKTV. All right, there we go. Welcome back to the Golfy Real Estate Show, Niagara Edition. I'm your host, Steph Vivier. Rob Golfy is with us today, and we've been talking some good news when it comes to trends in real estate. Things are picking up, and also where you should be getting your advice from. Uh, all right. The film industry uh, has really been heating up. I know in the Hamilton area, and uh, I recently interviewed somebody on my show who's trying to get a Niagara film office going here because we get a lot of um, different uh, productions that want to come and use the beautiful landscape here. Um, and there's actually a way to get your house in, into productions. Uh, have any of your houses ever been featured, Rob? You know, I, I, I wanted to put uh, what, a couple of my offices on there. So now, because I'm talking about this, I'm, I'm actually going to send pictures um, of my uh, different location houses that I have to, to put them on the movie list. You'd be amazed how much money you can make uh, if, if your house is on a movie list. Um, like, I know a lady. She has a 10-acre parcel of land an old cottage style house on it and she charges i think i think close to ten thousand dollars a day no wow. and, and yes in, in in some cases depending on the movie depending on how long they want but you can get between 500 to ten thousand dollars a day i and and i know a lady that basically there's nobody living in this cottage. She wanted to sell it, but then she's changed her mind, saying, you know what, I, I make enough money on movie uh, uh, shoots on this property that I, I, it carries itself with the, the, the money that she makes on the movie shoots. And you'd be amazed, at, like, like, if you've got, like, I mean, it doesn't matter what style house it is. It don't have to, you don't have to have a pretty house. You don't have to, it, it, it can be any style house. But what happens is, um, when you put your house on a movie list, um, um, managers or production managers, they go out looking for certain style of house. And then if yours is on there, they'll come there and, and take a look at it and say, hey, we like to film a movie here. And it could be, you know, any any movie. It, it could be some, you know, some major movie star or whatever. But you'd be amazed how much money you can make on uh, on a, with, with somebody filming movies on, on your property. Now, sometimes you have to move out. Or sometimes you can move in. For me, with my offices, chances are the only thing I would use is just have them use the outside of the house because, um, you know, we got, like, I got a business to run. I can't, I can't shut down my business. I can't tell my agents, hey, listen, for, for two weeks, you got, you got no place to, to, to work out of. I can't do that. But, but, but it, it is a good opportunity to make money. And if you Google, you know, want to put my house on the movie list or something like that, uh, there, there's one company It's called, uh, this is uh, uh, GTA Filming, but there's so many. Look into it. I'm telling you that there is great opportunity. Uh, e even if it's vacant land with a, with a shed on it, like a, like a, like a garage or something like that, like it, it, they use that in a haunted movie, you know what I mean? Like, like you'd be surprised what, what can be used. So, but I, I definitely would... Um, I definitely would go to uh, um, um, find a movie uh, movie lists and get on there and put your house on there. Wow. And do you set your own prices? Do you know? Is it kind of like Airbnb sort of thing? Or would they sort of make offers in terms of what you have to offer? Uh, I, 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 think, I think it's the style of home and how big it is and stuff like that. So my biggest office uh, that I have is, is the one in Hamilton. And that one there, um, I bought that building. In, off a late off the lady that does like she had she did movie lists she she got movies done uh, on those properties and she said I can demand five to ten thousand dollars a day on on my Hamilton office now I got a Grimsby office now that's totally renovated looks beautiful it's like a Marcus Welby a, that's way back if anybody remembers Marcus Welby house it's like a nice traditional looking house it's it's a eighty seven hundred square foot uh, building. And, um, uh, that, that, um, I, I, you know, we just finished uh, renovating and doing that. So I may put that on a, on a movie list that we got plenty of parking there. And, and actually in Grimsley, I think they shut down downtown for about two days, just this 
uh, past week or next week. I'm not sure when it's happening because uh, they're, they're filming a movie in, in downtown Grimsby. But, but yeah, the opportunities are there. Get your house on a movie list and, uh, you know, it'll pay for, it'll pay for something, especially if you're young, if you're a young millennial and you know, it's a struggle, like you'd be amazed like that, that, that little extra bit that you get, you know, from a, from a movie can, you know, help pay for the taxes of the houses can help pay for a lot of things or pay for a vacation that you want to go on. Absolutely. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe, uh, you know, you mentioned sometimes you have to move out. Maybe you're already going on vacation, right? And and you could say, all right, these two weeks, I'm not going to be there. So it wouldn't even be that big of a problem. But a nice little creative solution. We have to get creative in these times of unaffordability. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, all right, Rob, you have brought us the number one place to check when selling your house. Um, I don't know if I was going to guess, I feel like it would be the kitchen. Cause I know people pay particularly close attention to kitchens when they're selling their houses. They, they do. But the one thing is if you're looking at selling your house, okay. And I've said this story, I think, uh, before check the attic. Okay. Now a lot of people don't even know what's going up in their attic. They don't even know if they've got animals up there, like pet, like, you know, any, like check the attic and you will find out that you don't want an inspector to find something that you don't know. So get up there, get family, friend, check the attic, get the flashlight. If you don't have a light up there, check it, check, you know, to see if, uh, you know, structurally it's good. Uh, pest infestation, insulation, you know, like you, some people, a lot of people bought houses in the last uh, few years that they were in competition and, and we just have one right now. Um, they have a uh, vermiculite insulation in, in their attic. They didn't even know that. I and mean, they bought the house with no inspection. Now they're on the hook of dealing with this vermiculite insulation so if anybody's buying it now you have to disclose it because now they know about it uh, mold and moisture uh storage hazardous electrical hvac stuff so the one thing the one thing to look for is a lot of times seniors they've lived in their house for 50 plus years and they don't know that they've hid stuff up in the attic and they forget about it and one of the spouses pass away and the other spouse doesn't know. And um, so they should look in their attic before they move out of the house if they or just look in the attic before they put their house up for sale. Because otherwise somebody else, the new, the next owner is going to uh, pick up on whatever belongings or money or jewelry or whatever. And this is a true story. And I said this story before. I had an elderly lady that lived in St. Catharines and she's, she was uh, a widow. And, and I said to her, you know, check the attic and everything else like that. Uh, you know, just to make sure there's nothing in there that is important to you. And because I know seniors forget, they forget where they hide stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if you're buying an old, oh. if you're buying, I got to tell well, you, I forget where I hide my keys every day. On no, myself, no, no know? kidding. I got a, I got a tracker for my keys. <laughs> I got a tracker, but I'll tell you, I mean, okay. If you're, if you're a, a young person buying a house off a seniors, I would, I, to me, I would check that house out every, every nook and cranny and everything go in the ad. Cause I'm telling you, you will find stuff. You will find stuff. But at, but as a homeowner, and if you're a senior, and you've been there a long time, it, even if you haven't been there a long time, check the attic. You probably put something up there you forgot about. Check it. But not only just checking it to make sure everything's good, but check it to make sure you have your belongings. Because the next homeowner is going to go up there, and if you have jewelry or cash, you they, they're guess what they're gonna go go to the pawn shop and uh and cash in on that jewelry and i'll tell you the story about the saint Catharines lady she she asked me if i can go up in the attic and i and I, I you know i was like okay well i mentioned it to her now like i gotta do she asked me if i would do it so i go in the garage get the ladder go up in the attic and guess what there was a box of personal belongings jewelry and everything else she had Incredible. no she had no idea. Her husband put it up there. He passed away like eight, nine years earlier. And he, who knows how long it was up there before that. So if I didn't say anything, she would have moved out of that house. And she would not even known it was missing. And anyway, she got that. She was so grateful. Uh, oh. She was almost in tears. And uh, like, like I said, 
people, please look in your attic. <laughs> Chances are you may own a house that you bought from a senior 10 years ago and there's stuff in your attic that you don't even know and, and it may be valuable. So I, I know people have found guns in attics. I know people have found a lot of different things. And, you, you know, you may find a nest of a, a, a nest of raccoon, a raccoon's nest up there. Well, you're going to have to call somebody to clean that out. <laughs> so you don't want you don't want the next owner to uh, do a home inspection, find that out and the deal falls apart. Right. But check now, check the attic though, definitely. When we when we check the attic, Rob, uh, we get, you know, whatever precious jewels and things like that down. If we find issues, do we fix them or do we just disclose them? Like what what is better to do? Yeah, you, you, you well, you fix them. So, okay, here's here's the here's that disclosure uh thing. So, um, I, I just went into a house the other day and they had a, a, some leakage around the chimney of their house. It was a one and a half story home. You know, the upstairs, you know, had the angled uh, roof line inside the house. And I said, I said, oh, it looks like you had some, uh, you know, some issues around the chimney. They go, yeah, it's been rectified, fixed. It's all fixed up, no problem. And I said, okay, we'll just paint that. And if, and uh, we can, it, we can tell there's a new roof on the house. So obviously they fixed it. So something like that is something you really, you don't have to, but, but if it's an issue that could arise again like a structural issue like if you inject it let's say you had a crack in the foundation yeah you should disclose that and say that we fixed that we have no issues now but who knows what's going to happen in the future but like sometimes you, you you know and the one thing i found people is that on the main floor you see there's a, a damage in the ceiling and above that ceiling is a bathroom well we know there was a probably you know something went wrong they fixed it and it's back to normal do you need to disclose that? You can if people ask questions about it, but if it's all taken care of, fixed, it's never going to happen again for another 20 years or, or whatever, 30 years. Uh, I don't think you have to, but I think the important stuff you do. I think you definitely have to disclose major, major uh, uh, things that had to be fixed that, uh, that, that could cause problems down the road again. And uh, like, you know what I mean? Like the downspouts. Uh, I, I would tell people, listen, we had the downspouts going into the weeping tiles. We changed it because, um, you know, we found that we had leaks. So now we have downspouts and we uh, take the, the water away uh, from the house. So we, we put, uh, you know, whatever little lines so that the water doesn't just go down along the foundation. And that mm -hmm. changes a lot of the situation. But yeah, you would tell people that. Just say, we did have some moisture. We fixed, we fixed it by uh, sending the water away from the house and we never had an issue again. But it is good to disclose that. The, all, all I would trust that too. You know, like if you're looking at a couple of houses and one of them is saying, oh no, there's never been anything wrong and perhaps they're of the similar age. If there's another one that sort of says, yeah, this went wrong and we did this and this and this, like I'm going to trust that more. I feel like that person's being more forthcoming or has more like understanding about the house. Oh, Oh, absolutely like I'm, I'm gonna tell you if you're looking at buying uh like a house that was built in the 50s and 60s and they've never uh dug around the house that house has never been dug up and new weeping tiles put in you've got plugged weeping tiles around that house they're plugged and 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 they're made out of clay you know those clay weeping tiles you know they, they put pieces yeah. together there's um there's a high probability you have that you, you've got that there's no like there's for sure you've got that. Uh, and uh, unless somebody uh, uh, has indicated that they, they've changed it. And how do you find out? It, who knows? You got you to gotta do your research on it. You know, like, like, hey, this house was built in 1960. Has anybody along the way fixed the weeping tiles? Um, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because, or, or you check the basement. Even if the walls are finished in the basement and, and everything, the floor is finished, everything is all good, um, you don't know if there's any moisture behind those walls. You know what I mean? Like, like there's something, there's some people find out issues when they start ripping out walls and say, Oh my God, we got a major problem here. We got mold. We got everything going on. So you have to be very, very careful, uh, especially those older houses. And, uh, so yeah, be very, uh, be very careful when you're buying those old houses. I bought a hundred year old house and, uh, it was a two and a half story brick Victorian. And I knew when I bought this house, chances are it doesn't have any weeping tiles. And mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, you know what I mean? Like there was, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, like, the, but I knew, um, the way the water was going away from the house that I didn't have an issue. I looked at the basement, the basement was finished. The carpet was right against the concrete on the floor. 
I would have known right away if there was any water issues when I was buying that house. There was no water issues on that house, and it was good. But I knew, like, I mean, the the walls in the basement were, like, two and a half feet thick. Like, it was, mm -hmm. like, I mean, they were, like, stone foundations. So, so I mean, it just depends. You Like, you know, it, it, I've owned century homes. I've owned houses that were built in the 50s. I've owned new houses. So, I know all the everything about them. I know what's to look for on all aspects of all ages of homes. Well, that's where the experience comes in with the Rob Golfy team. You can find more about his team at robgolfy.com. Rob's going to stick around. This is the Golfy Real Estate Show Niagara edition. I'm your host, Steph Vivier. This is News Talk 610 CKTV. All right, there we go. One to go. Flying along. Yeah. There you go. Welcome back to the Golfy Real Estate Show, Niagara Edition. I'm your host, Steph Vivier, learning so much as always with Rob Golfy. Rob, we were talking about the one place to check. You said the attic, that's the place to check before you sell your home. I'm definitely going home and, and checking my attic because <laughs> it's been a while. Who knows what I'm going to find out up there. Um, now, something that uh, people have been uh, increasingly doing is finding ways to afford their space with roommates. And you've got some stats on roommate listings for us. Yes, so it, it, it has been on, on, on the rise because, okay, buying a house is very expensive. And and, it, and that's not gonna change uh, in Ontario or, you know, or Vancouver or Quebec or wherever. But the one thing we found that a lot of people do is they rent rooms in their house so they can afford, you know, just to make life a little easier for them. And, and they're finding that in, in May, there was two major cities. Um, it was uh, Toronto and Vancouver. The, there, those are the only two cities that the uh, rental uh, rate went uh, down from last year to this year, but everywhere else it's gone up. So in, in Toronto, uh, to rent a bedroom uh, in Toronto, it, now it's, like, it's almost like $1,233. That's a lot of money just to rent yeah. a bedroom to live. And right. uh, it's crazy. In Vancouver, it's about uh, $1,487. Now, I know, I know uh, different people uh, that own houses in, in Niagara. And I remember this one lady, she rented out her two bedrooms. And, hmm. you know, so all bedrooms had a lock on it. And, she, and her bedroom had an ensuite and walk-in closet. So it was easy for her to, you know, lock everything up. You, she had her own bathroom. She didn't have to worry about anything. But a lot of people do this. And, and it's going to become more and more popular because it's the only way, you know, renters can afford to pay rent because they're going to have to share a house with somebody. And, it's, and also a homeowner, especially if it's a single-person homeowner, um, able to afford to, to own a house because uh, they're going to have to rent out a room or two until, you know, who knows what happens, you know, with their situation and their, uh, their income or whatever to be able to afford the house 100% on their own without having strangers living with them. What would you say? Okay, Rob, um, I, I got to look for a roommate for my house. What do you look for? Because this is really like, even when people get married, they have a, an adjustment period if they haven't lived together before. Like it's certainly an adjustment period to to live with someone. So so picking out a roommate, what yeah. kind of stuff would yeah. you look for? Yeah, you gotta you really gotta find somebody that uh, is uh, is uh, I don't know. Like first of all, you want to check out where they live, see if they're neat and clean. But then after, what if somebody has makes noises in the middle of the night? They're their the bedroom across the hall. <laughs> It's all of a sudden, <laughs> you know, they snore or they fart all night. Who knows what happens? You know what I mean? Like, like you have to, you know, yeah, you have to ask those questions, right? And uh, it, uh, like, it's something, you know, it's like, hey, it's like, it's like, you know, you know, moving in with a partner, you pretty well know each other to a certain degree. I, I figure if, if you're, so here's, here's the thing. If you are let's say dating somebody, right? A partner. And then you're saying, okay, let's go to the next level. Let's move in together. You really, before you move in together, you pretty well know each other, maybe 95 to 97%. It's that 3% is what you're really going to find out that person, if you're going <laughs> to like that person or you're not. So it's, it's that, you know what I mean? It's all the way they, you know, how they live. Right. But, yeah. but if you're taking on strangers, you gotta like it's you gotta you you know you gotta really really 
do your research on on strangers find out where they work look at where they live and and you know see what they drive look inside their car and say wow your car is a mess forget it i don't want you living in my house like you know what i mean like you want you want you want the right right person and and you know and it depends on the on the person like the uh, you know like do they party a lot do they come in at two o'clock in the morning like you got to find out what shit if they work shift work you know you, you don't want to be you know in bed and, and and meanwhile they're coming home at one or two o'clock in the morning and and that you if you're a light sleeper you're going to wake up so you got to be very very careful when you're taking on a roommate to help you pay for uh, for your mortgage and taxes on your house i'm too chatty like i would really need to find boundaries on because you know i'd come in and want to be very like chatty with that person all the time and you know how it is rob you're coming in you're going you, you don't have time to you know get into a whole thing with somebody you're yeah you no know, kidding you're, you're, you're getting to meet and everything yeah and, and you know what and i know some people that have uh, brought in uh roommates and and they, they've been out for many years and they're and they're great friends now so oh yeah so it's yeah. it's no, it works for yeah, sure it, it does work and it doesn't work and it's just on how you pick the right person and you gotta l- let the rules lay the rules down like i mean like you guys are sharing a fridge you're sharing a uh you know a bathrooms you're sharing you're sharing you're sharing your living room like like who you know who gets to watch what like who's li- who has the rights to the living room uh and gets to put the movie on who gets to use it like and then also you know, if you have people visiting you, like, like how many people can visit you? Like you, it's mm-hmm. like, you, you really, really got to gauge it. And then if, and if, if it's somebody that you really, you know, don't like, and, and they become a nightmare. And I just had one right now in Thorold and, uh, this lady is giving a hard time, uh, in moving out and they, and, and she's a, a total like wreck slob and, and totally destroyed this, this, uh, bathroom and totally destroyed the bedroom. And, uh, and I don't know what the tenancy agreement that they had together, but uh, if it's a border, I think, you know, just, hey, pack their stuff up and put it on the front porch and say, see you later. I don't want you in this house anymore because you, you're destroying my house. But, um, but you got to figure out what kind of tenancy agreement you have. And if, and, and if you rank it as a boarding, uh, they're boarding your house, then guess what? I don't know about the laws of the landlord-tenant lord about that, but I'm assuming it, it's, a, it's a different tenancy agreement versus the landlord-tenant board uh, law. That, uh, but, uh, yeah, you just want that person out because you don't want them destroying your house. For sure. Do your homework, right? Do your homework on that and really think all the scenarios through because people might be a, a little bit desperate. You know, maybe they've had a relationship, it broke down and they can't afford the place, whatever it is. But I would say, you know, take a beat, you know, go into debt a little bit if you have to, uh, just to take the time to get the right person. Absolutely. Yeah. Just, just, you know, vent them out and find out exactly who they are. Cause, uh, cause one, one mistake like that can, can just make a mess of your life for, for a bit. What would make you a bad roommate? What's a bad habit of yours, Rob? Um, me, me? No, you know what? I'm, I'm good. I'm quiet. Um, I'd be the person that would leave early in the morning and I'd probably show up, um, later at night. I'd be, I'd be that guy that's showing up between nine and, and 11 and I'd be the quiet right to the room, right to bed. And like, I usually put Seinfeld on to fall asleep because it's nice and short. I know all the jokes. I, I've watched that show so many times. I don't even have to watch it. I just have to hear it and uh, put, put the sleep mode on in, in, in 15 minutes. And I'm out like a light and then back up again, you know, between four and five in the morning and, and, and the same thing. So I'm, I'm, I'd be the easiest roommate out there to uh to live with so it just all right uh, yeah we're looking so, for roommates call rob golfy <laughs> call me if you're looking for me if, 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 if i'm looking if i'm looking for a room just call me i'll uh i'll i'm an easy one you won't even know you, you won't even know i was there that's how easy that's, it is that's the ideal that's the ideal roommate um all right if you want affordability you brought us a list of some of the most affordable towns and cities in ontario so this is exciting Yes. We don't want to lose anybody in the Niagara region, but there's places you can go. <laughs> so it looks like it's mostly where the cold places are. It truly does. Thunder Bay. Oh, my God. You know, that is, like, way up there. Like, I don't know. Is oh. it, that's got to be about a 20-hour a, a drive, like, to Thunder oh, yeah. Bay. I don't know. I, it's, like, that's like an island in the middle of, 
of northern Ontario. I don't know. It's, but people live up there. Thunder Bay is, you know, they say it's lower cost of living, housing prices compared to larger cities, medium home prices significantly below Ontario's average. So, I don't know what they do up there. Uh, I, was it a paper mill up? Uh, is it paper that that what was their resource? Uh, I don't know what Thunder Bay was. But I mining, know, you think? My, that's that. That's it. Mining, and you know what? And uh, there, there was a big uh, population of Italians that moved up there way back in uh, probably in the early 1900s. Uh, that moved mm. moved to Thunder Bay. Sudbury is another area, another cold area. Sudbury, uh, Sault Ste. Marie, uh, Windsor. You know, Windsor is becoming very popular. I remember, I remember the houses in Windsor. They were so cheap. They were even cheaper than Niagara, Niagara Falls, I St. Catharines. Well, I'm, I'm from Essex County. I'm from Essex, so Windsor just down the road. That's where I started Radio Rob. So that's uh, there you go. See, my own heart. See, yeah. Can you imagine if you bought about two or three houses there? They like they went oh, up like crazy. It's it's amazing. Cornwall was uh, is another area that is uh, is pretty Timmins. North Bay, you know, little, you know, North Bay, I think is about maybe three, maybe is it four hour drive, five hour drive from, uh, yeah, three, four hours from here. Yeah. 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 Brockville, Chatham, Kent, you know, Chatham, Kent, that's, uh, that's not, that's pretty well on your way to, uh, Windsor, isn't it? Uh, if you're, yeah, between London and Windsor, yeah. That's a hell of a drive. Do you, how often do you take that drive to go to Windsor or, or, or Essex County? Let me County? tell you, to my parents, uh, <laughs> dislike almost never because y- once you get to London, there is, nothing after that there's like you know two service centers but other than that it's truly the most boring drive I, I, it has to be the most boring drive in all of Canada. Oh, and no kidding i i don't know if i could handle it somebody said to me hey let's go to windsor i says ah it's okay you guys go ahead <laughs> <laughs> i'm not like it's just that drive is just deadly like it it's it like, truly like, is it, yep. it, it can actually it can actually what, what do they go hypnotize you because you're thinking you're yes. seeing the same thing you know you got windmills now you're you're seeing on the way down there i don't know i just you know that that drive to windsor i think i'd take a train and fall asleep and hopefully i wake up in three hours and i'm there but that's um, the best way to do it if you can no it's it's very even i lived in london for a while and even from london you know it's only two hours but man as soon as you hit the highway it's like dull boring city we've only gone 20 minutes oh my goodness i know i know i don't i don't get home very often uh, (laughs) so (laughs) so your parents and your parents don't want to come out and see you because they don't want to take the drive so you know Uh, that's it oh boy oh boy oh boy (laughs) just say how did you end up in windsor of all places yeah right yeah Yeah. you you know what i mean And, and that's why that's why the cities along the uh, cor- the queen, the golden horseshoe, like even right up to Barry, are more expensive because it's it's like to t- Toronto, anything that's close to Toronto, and like and if there was no traffic, let's say you were leaving Niagara Falls to Toronto, you probably can get there about an hour and fifteen minutes, an hour and twenty minutes, or an hour and fifteen minutes, I think, uh, like on you know if you're driving the speed limit, um, but. Niagara region. So Niagara region, relatively affordable affordability. The Niagara region overall falls in the middle tier of affordability in Ontario. It offers cheaper Hmm. living costs than larger metropolitan areas like the GTA, but it is more expensive than the northern and rural areas like Sudbury, Timmins, or uh, Sault Ste. Marie. Niagara's combination of amenities, proximity to the U.S. border, and tourism industry means its housing prices are somewhat higher than Ontario's most affordable areas. I grew up in Niagara Falls. Uh, I know. I, I, I love it. I, I wish I bought, uh, you know, more houses in Niagara Falls, especially the wartime houses there uh, by Drummond and Dunn Street. Uh, there was a whole whack of, uh, of um, uh, what do you call it, wartime houses there that were even at 60000 70000 and 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 they were not, not that long ago. They were about $100,000, $110,000. And they just went up like crazy. And now, now the affordability is is it's tough. Like re, like even as an investor, it's 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 tough. Investors cannot buy a single family home anymore, and buy it and rent it out. And in in ten years from now, you're going to find renters are going to struggle looking for a home to to raise their family. Like if they have kids and to have a backyard, it's going to be tough. Renters are gonna are gonna hurt the most in in five to ten years from now because there's not going to be much of those left around 
Well, it's, you know, you're mentioning it's kind of the cold places. <laughs> you want to know where it's affordable? It's kind of the cold places. Um, so everyone has to kind of make their own choices. You, you, you pick a place like Sudbury and your parents are in the Niagara region, you've got that distance. And so, um, you know, everyone's going to make their own choices on that. I should say, though, I shouldn't completely crap on Windsor because at least it's not the cold, right? You, you, the Thunder Bays and the Sudburys, they're like prepping for winter right now, whereas we're going to get some nice weather this weekend. At least in Windsor, you get some warmer weather. Well, Windsor, isn't it the most, isn't there a spot there that's the most southerly part of Canada? It is, yeah, Point Peely. Yeah, yes, it's the most, it, and, and truly, like, as I was growing up, Rob, we did not have a snow day. Like, it was... <laughs> So <laughs> we just didn't have it. There you go. So maybe Windsor yeah. is worth moving to. So, you know, and it's still, and it's, and, and it's on a top 10 affordable list. So maybe Windsor's the way to go, but say you, hi to my parents. You, you got decide. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you have anything you want me to bring with me when I go down there? <laughs> yeah. I have some old Tupperware. I got to get back to there, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Tupperware. Yeah. You, they, they're probably waiting for that for sure. You know? Absolutely. Uh, Rob Golfie, thank you, sir. Always a pleasure. 